Buenos dias. Mi nombre es Pastor El. El mensaje de hoy es traducido en español. Por favor, levante sus manos si desea un otefono o una Biblia. Good morning and welcome. Uh, this is our time to get into the Bible. If you need a Bible in English or we have them in Spanish, if you like an audio phone to listen to the translation in Spanish, raise your hand. The ushers will be making their way down the row and they will be happy to get those to you. And once you get your Bible... Open it up this morning to the book of 2 Timothy. It's a little book towards the back of your Bible. If you see Hebrews, you went a little too far. Just come back a little bit from Hebrews to 2 Timothy. And once you find 2 Timothy, look for chapter 1. So 2 Timothy chapter 1. And then look for verse 3, which is where we will begin reading today. We uh, turn the corner to, towards one of my favorite times of the year, one of my favorite holidays of the year, Thanksgiving Day. I don't know about you, I love Turkey Day. <laughs> and not just because of the turkey or the family, but because of the thankfulness. We need that in our lives, right? I mean, I say this every day. Every day should be Thanksgiving Day, right? But, but it's good to have a time of year where we sort of get our minds thinking and programmed towards thankfulness. And, and so I love this time of year. It's good for us. Not even just a day, but a season. It's good, you know, it's good to, to make a list. Start doing it now. For what are you thankful? What would you put on your list? You know what? It, 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 some days it's hard to, to do that, isn't it? I mean, some days it is hard to be thankful. You're down. You're discouraged. But, but I think even then, especially then, when you are struggling, it is important and helpful to make your list. And not just for yourself, but make a list so you can give the thanks to God. For what are you thankful? On days when you think all is lost, there's a whole lot for which you to be thankful. And I want to encourage you to start thinking that way. Let's not go through Thanksgiving Day this year and forget the meaning and reason that we have so much. You know, on your list, of course, I'm praying, of course, number one would be Jesus, right? That he came, my hero. He came to save the day. He gave his life for me and paid for my sins. He rose again. There's number one. But there's so much more you could put on your list. So today I want to tell you what's on my list. Right at the top, just below Jesus. <laughs> it's you. Why am I thankful this year? I'm thankful for you. You know, special year for me. <laughs> and I've just been reflecting how grateful to the Lord I am. For the time that I've had here and the time with you and you. You know, I thought about this uh, series of messages. I thought, you know, in the Bible there's a beautiful set of passages where the Apostle Paul writes these letters to people, Christians, people in churches. And he had a lot of churches. And in each of the letters he'd always have a little section right in the beginning where he'd be thankful. He'd tell them, I'm thankful to God for you. I want to take a look at a couple of those this month with you. And today I'm going to take one where actually Paul was writing not to a whole church, but to one person in a church named Timothy. That's why I got this name here, Second Timothy. And I really thought about this passage and this uh, letter of Paul because of today. Uh, we're going to, at the end of the service, say a goodbye to Pastor Lavelle and Jennifer today. And to me, Pastor Lavelle, you're kind of like my Timothy, as Timothy was to Paul. 
You weren't really the young kid, <laughs> but God raised you up to be a man of God and a pastor under hallelujah. And uh, God has a special calling, and we're going to pray for you and you, Jennifer, in that calling today. So I thought about this passage, and I, I thought, boy, it's a good one I want to save for you. But the beauty of it is, as I say these words, and I read these words, I don't think just of um, Pastor Lavelle and Jennifer. I, I think of all of you. The, the words here, to me, speak so much about every one of you, whether you're brand new or whether you've been coming for 20 years. I think of you when I think of these words. So with that in mind, we're going to read just a few verses. Follow along, beginning at verse 3. Here's what it says. I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I've been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am now persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Amen? What was Paul thankful for when he thought of this man, Timothy, whom he raised up to be a pastor? What am I thankful for when I think not just a pastor Lavelle, but all of you? Here's the first thing, and it may sound strange. Thankful for your tears. Thankful for your tears. Look at verse 3 again. We'll put it up on the screen. Paul writes, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Man, I can relate to that. I'm OCD when it comes to praying for you guys. <laughs> Paul was that way with Timothy. He was always thinking about, always praying for Timothy. Why? Why, why am I always praying for you? Well, look at, look at this next verse, verse 4. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Paul says, the favorite thing I remember about you is when you were crying. What? Well, what's, why the tears? Why do I value your tears? Because when we cry, we let out, we share, Something that's very deep and personal. You ever have it where you cry tears of joy? You know, that, that's a deep joy. That's not just a ha-ha joy. That's a deep, when you cry tears of joy, that's a deep joy. I want to thank you for all the times you cried with me. I have a box of tissues in my office and I'm always running out. <laughs> and whether it was in my office or whether it was here in the sanctuary or out in the parking lot or at your house or out for a cup of coffee, I can't tell you the number of people who have cried with me. And I value that. Because when you cry, you share a part of you, a deep part of you, with me. And I, fi I find that's an honor that you have shared some of the deepest struggles, pain, and joys 
of your life. What's rewarding about being a pastor? It's when people share their lives. And you see God working in their lives. You know, if you're new, I want to tell you, this is a church where it's okay to cry. It's okay to let your heart out. It's safe here. Because there's love here. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the way that you showed me love just by crying. Here's the second thing that he was thankful for in this passage. He says to Timothy, I'm thankful for your sincere faith. Beginning of verse 5. Uh, beginning of verse 5. Do we have that? There it is. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, Paul writes. Uh, look at those two words at the end. Sincere faith. What's sincere faith? It's faith that's not phony. See, to me, that's the best kind of faith. You know, I, I'm not really into this, oh, the, I'm always up, I'm always high, I'm always praising the Lord, I'm always good. You know, it's like, really? Sincere faith is a faith that is ups and downs. Good days and bad days. Do I hear an amen? Amen. Yep. That's sincere faith. Where you're not trying to be a phony, always smiling. Where you can cry. Where, where you can express your fears or your worries or your doubts. That's sincere faith. Where you can express even times you struggle with doubts. That's sincere faith. That's what I like about you. You know, one of the things I just love so much is it's, this church is unpretentious. It's beautiful. We had a group of uh, leaders get together uh, about two years ago, three years, two or so years ago. And we tried to come up with, we, we were asked this question, what makes Oasis unique? What are some of the strengths of Oasis? How would you describe the culture or DNA when you want to put your positive foot forward? Here's what we came up with. I want to show you a screen. We use, you know, we're Oasis, so we use the word waters. And uh, do we have that next screen? Yeah, there it is. You know, as an acronym, we use that. Here's what we came up with. Uh, and even here's what I say to new people. And when you go swimming, I don't know about you. So, I mean, some crazy people there at the ocean, they just run in the ocean, right? I kind of go up and go, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> you know, you put your toe in, you want to f- find out what the water's like. So I say, you want to know what the waters are like at Oasis? Here's what they're like. I think I could say this very confidently. This is the DNA of Oasis. Warm welcome. Authentic relationships, transform lives, everyday truth, reaching out, seeking God in prayer. See, there's even a flow to those. When you come here, there's a warmth here, there's a love here, and that allows people to be authentic and real here. That's where the sincere faith starts coming in. It's not a phony place. And as that sincere faith comes into play, that's where T transformed life. And that's where people start to see how the Bible applies to my everyday struggles. It has meaning for my ups and downs of life. And that's where when I start to get that faith in the Lord, I reach out to others. Here in the church, out in the community. And I, and I seek the Lord because I'm honest about the struggles of my faith. I'm thankful for that in you. I've learned a lot about faith from you. You may say, well, Pastor, we learned a lot from you. Yeah, well, it's been mutual. I've learned from you. Some of the most humble people in this church have taught me powerful lessons in terms of your sincere faith. And I want to thank you for that. 
Here's the third thing Paul points out. Thankful for the generations. For the generations. Look at, again, the, the verse 5 and its com- comple- completion. The whole verse. <laughs> I am reminded, he says, of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. I like this verse for a couple reasons. One is it highlights something that is still true today in many churches, and I think in this one, that women have always been the backbone. All right, girlfriends. (laughs) All the faith. And you don't get enough credit. There's a lot of women who come here on their own. No, we have men who do that too. I'm not putting the guys down. But a lot of times the ladies, especially in those days, did not get the credit. But in the Bible they did. And you see how that faith was passed along. Now here's the other thing that I love about this I really want to highlight. Is you see the generations. See, first there's Big Mama. Lois, and then there's Mama Eunice. First there's Avolita, Lois, and then there's Mamacita, Eunice. You got it? (laughs) What a joy it's been for me to see little kids grow up. Take on ministries. Start helping other little kids grow up. Take on ministries. Man, when you stay around like me for this long, you see a lot of the generations. What a joy that's been. From baptisms to funerals. From birthdays, you know, to hospital visits, to see your lives progress, to see the faith being passed on, to seeing the next kids' Christmas program. I'm already excited. (laughs) That's what the Lord wants. The generations. That's why, you know what? You got to hang in for the next generation. You got to help that next generation. I'm thankful for that. Seeing people raised up in the Lord. Here's the next one Paul writes, I'm also thankful for your gifts. For your gifts. Verse. Six, he says, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. Paul said to Timothy, man, I'm so thankful that gift you have to be a pastor. Remember when I laid my hands on you, we prayed for you, and that I could see that gift was in you from God? You have a gift. Abilities. Maybe it's not to be a pastor, but it's to do something. I have been so thankful over the years of this church to see how many people have stepped up. Every time, it's like, every time somebody, for whatever reason, moves on, can't do it anymore, whatever, falls away, sadly, there's always somebody else that's been coming up behind them with a gift. I want to give you that encouragement for after the first of the year. And I want you to think about what he says. Fan the flame. See, right now in some of you, that gift is there. It's some kind of ability that you can help out in the life of this church. It's our third drink of the living water ministry. It's in you, but it's a little coal. There's the Holy Spirit. Let's get this fire going. you got to step up, my friends. Because you have been given a gift from God to use for the people of God, to use for the community out there. 
And I'm praying God's going to touch your hearts. I've been so thankful the way this church has been a team. A lot of people, a lot of you may not realize how many people are involved in the life of the way more than any of you even begin to see. This church is a team. You have a gift, and we need more members on the team. Hallelujah. But that's why I'm so thankful for these two people, Pastor Lavelle and Jennifer. You know, when I go through this whole list here, um, I just see uh, all the things I've been talking about this morning, I think about the two of you. I want to thank you for the times that we cried together and shared our lives. You know, what's been beautiful We've built such a deep trust, haven't we? And I could share some of the deepest start of my life, and you share the deep. See, that's where you get a good team. And I'm thankful because you made me feel so loved and safe. Such good partners to Beth and me. I want to thank you for the tears. I want to thank you for your sincere faith. And when I think about those words, you're in the dictionary, right? By sincere faith. <laughs> you're both very humble people of God. There's nothing phony about either of you. That's why we all love you so much. You're real. You're humble. You're like Jesus. Thank you for your sincere faith. For the generations that you brought to this church. Your mom, Rose, Miss Rose. And I love it. She said, well, I don't care. I'm staying. <laughs> I don't know if Miss Rose is here yet, but I don't care, <laughs> son. I'm staying. Your, your sister and her kids. Your nephews and nieces. Danielle and her kids, Lindsay, Leanne, the generations, the generations that you brought to this church. And I'm thankful for your gifts. Each one of you have used your gifts so faithfully. You've been such a good model. Women's ministries, PowerPoint ministries, helping in the office. Thank you, Jennifer. Teaching preaching, shepherding, leading a recovery ministry, all the small groups ministries, all the discipleship ministries. I want to thank you, Pastor Lavelle. You've been a blessing. And I want to read these words. If you could put verses 6 and 7 up on the screen again. I want to read these words for you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of our hands. We're going to lay hands on you and pray for you today. Yeah, verse 7, For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. You know, you're taking a courageous step you're not showing timidity. You're being courageous. What's going to see you through? The power of the Lord, the love of the Lord, and staying disciplined in the Lord. These words are for you. Let me say a little prayer. 